Hey Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. So, since I've just passed 600 subscribers, I am going to do a full collection video. So, this is every EDC pocket knife I have in my current collection. Some of these are just for review, some of these are in my permanent collection, and some of these I'm still waiting for something to come like pocket clips or omega springs or whatever so let me just go through the entire collection i have with you guys as you can see as uh, edc hoarders go i don't really have a lot of knives and even then uh, i eventually will trim this down even more and i got a couple of knives on the way so uh it might take some time for it to get here but enjoy my current collection as it is so let's start with the cheapest knife here we have here the gonzo uh, this is the F753M in 440C blade. Very nice little knife here. I got this guy for a review and the other reason I got this guy for is because I wanted to know if I could use the Omega Springs in here and replace them in my Benchmade bug out. But because the springs are a bit too uh, big, it actually doesn't fit in here. But this knife has actually surprised me and uh, that should not be surprising because I've had Gonzo knives before and every Gonzo knife I've had, I've been impressed with. The kind of quality that you get for the price is amazing this i bought for i think 75 ringgit which is like 17 usd okay it has a nice blade still 440c is great and we have full steel liners you have thumb studs skeleton uh, skeletonized liners on the inside as well it has a really nice action thumb studs are nice and protruding the only bad thing i can say about this knife is that you do have teflon on one side and bronze on the other side and then it's not a deep carry pocket clip but ergonomically uh, in the pocket and in the hand this knife comes in really nicely and even though it has teflon on one side it's still a drop shutter of a knife now the next one uh, in terms of pricing let's put that up top is this guy this is the buck uh, 112 slim yeah this is the buck knife does it say it here yeah so this is the buck knife 112 this is the 112 series another really good budget option we have here, I believe, 420HC. Uh, it doesn't actually say it on the blade, but uh, you can watch the full review. I go throughout, uh, I talk about all the specs in the full review, it's on my channel. It's not a really great budget knife, very comfortable in hand. You have some nice rounding of the edges here. The grivery scales that they have here are nicely textured and more comfortable than the Benchmade grivery scales. Uh, the ergonomics are also very nice. You don't have a particular place to put your fingers, but this entire place here has a nice kind of scalloping for your fingers to go into. Very comfortable knife in hand. I don't like it because I'm not a big fan of recurved blades uh, and I do like um, less of a belly on my blades. This pocket here is kind of nice. It does carry very nicely in the pocket, but you know, overall it is just a really good knife but nothing more than just a knife. Now, there's very little fidget factor. It is a two-handed opening and closing knife. You have a little bit of a wiggle here on the thumb studs, uh, which I try to tighten up, but I can't really tighten it for some reason. So it does spin here a little bit. But now overall, if you only have like a hundred, like uh, I can't remember how much this was going for. I think like 20 USD, 25 USD. This is a good option for you. Uh, I would personally go with the Gonzo, but if you want to buy Made in America, then you get this guy. Next up on the pricing scale, I have this guy. This is until today uh, still one of my favorite, if not my favorite budget knife uh, I've ever used. This is the 10 gram Santa Fe. A couple of things I really like about this. I love the blade shape. Uh, as already mentioned, I do like a shallower belly kind of knife because I do a lot of pull cuts. It comes to a nice fine tip right there and it's very thin behind the edge. We have a very tall flat grind on a blade stock that's quite thin. So this guy is actually a really really good slicer. Ergonomics is pretty good. You have a place for your finger here and then a place for your fingers to go into. Not the best ergonomic knife. It's not like Spyderco level ergonomics but still pretty darn good ergonomics. The disassembly and reassembly is very easy. All the screws here are T8 screws which I really appreciate. It has a nice deep carry pocket clip. Just a nice knife to carry and use on a daily basis. Uh, the only thing I can say about it that's kind of bad is that the the lock bar tension, I don't know why, but the, this particular line lock does fail on me. If I give it a little bit of a whack, see, it fails right there. You know, it has never unlocked on me when I was using it, but if I do spine whack it, uh, it does uh, disengage the lock. So maybe there's something wrong with the lock face or whatever. Uh, but yeah, just do keep that in mind. I have a half a heart to replace this with something, but the overall design of this knife is so good, I just don't know if it's something I could ever replace or sell. Okay, next up on the pricing list, I have this. This is the CJRB Rio. 
it is a line lock but do not worry it does not have the problem where if you spine rack it the the lock buckles is much better locking design now this knife is a knife that i really want to like but it's a knife that ultimately i do not like it why I want to like it is because it is just a great slim pocket design, pocket carry design where you have this nice pocket clip which I really enjoy. You have nice recessed screws and recessed pocket clip so you can go in the pocket really nice, it really hides really well. It's a nice action, the detent here is quite nice whereas the detent here is quite soft. This has a nice detent, it really just pops out and uh, once you get the right angle, and you put in just the right amount of force, it will just pop out without fail. This is just, it's very hard to fail deploy this guy and it's just really satisfying. Ultimately, why I do not like it is, uh, has to do with number one, ergonomics. Uh, there is no, like, I do like a knife with a good finger guard, okay, that kind of protects you from sliding onto the blade, okay. Uh, I do like finger choils that you have here, 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 and even here a little bit. Here has, you can see that there's a finger choil as well. So that kind of like smooth transition between handle to blade kind of makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I'm always afraid of it, of my fingers sliding forward and then onto the blade. So that's something I always try to avoid. And the uh, other thing is that even though this is a full flat ground and it does come out uh, relatively sharp behind the edge, but it has, a quite a, it has quite a thick blade stock. I just wish this blade stock was a little bit thinner would make this a lot more of a slicey knife. So overall, I do not like this guy as much as this guy but that really comes down to the blade and the ergonomics however the design of this knife this is a very gorgeous knife uh, personally i would get some i would personally get the g10 one because the carbon fiber here it is real carbon fiber it's carbon fiber all the way through however it is very slippery carbon fiber and i do like a more textured carbon fiber if you're going to go in that route Next up, uh, let's go up the pricing range a little bit. So these are all under 100 bucks. In fact, I think these are all like right around 50 bucks. Maybe this guy's a little bit more expensive. Let's go with this guy. I bought this guy uh, quite a few years ago. This is one of the older knives in my collection. I bought this when it was only 91 USD. Now, unfortunately, it has gone up to 105 because, hey, price creep is a thing. So apparently lightweight. You know, many times when I did the video, uh, when I did videos about which knife would I keep in my collection, this guy has one. Twice, this guy has beaten out the bug out, the ZT, and I can, I can almost see that happening again uh, once I do another one of those videos. A couple of things has going for it that's really great. It has great ergonomics. This is one of the most comfortable knives to hold in my hand. With the exception of these, these internal liners are quite sharp. No, not liners. The internal sides of these uh, of these uh, plastic seals are quite sharp. So you might want to sand that down if that's a real bother for you. But ergonomically in hand, you know, you can grip this and it's really grippy in hand. You have a thumb ramp up here so you ha can have a lot of like forward pressure when you try to pierce into something. CTS BD1N is a good steel. It's like 154 cm level kind of steel. It has really good... Uh, rust resistant it is not rust proof like say lc200n but it's still pretty darn good has a great action the detent is nice it's nice and fidgety i love a compression lock it's one of my favorite locking mechanisms out there it has a nice deep curved pocket clip which i really enjoy it does sometimes it would feel like a little bit big in the pocket but if you have one of these pocket that has like these little corners in the sides of the pocket this is what kind of pushes into that corner and then it actually carries a lot smaller in the pocket than i expected and because the top here is so slim, your hands can still get passed into the pocket quite nicely. Overall, really love this. I really love this kind of volcano texturing. You know, a lot of people don't like this kind of polymer plastic scales, but I think the advantages of this material, and it's one of my favorite, in fact, it could be my favorite material for pocket knife handles, is because you can do a whole bunch of different designs, and then it can, it can kind of overcome uh, kind of the... Uh, like flaws that come with plastic scales which you know, some people don't like it it's not particularly stiff but you can definitely have its advantages with being able to design it next up uh, it's a knife that uh, has very much disappointed me benchmade bug out mainly because after about six months of fidgeting one of the omega springs broke and another two months after that another one of the omega springs broke so this is a dead knife uh, i I made a joke video on the 1st of April that uh, I've turned my Benchmade bug out into a slip joint so you want to check that out. Overall, let's say it's working. I am planning on buying some aftermarket uh, Omega Springs because I've heard that the ones on Etsy are really good. So I, I do plan on getting it. Overall, this is a very good EDC. It could be one of the best EDC knife designs out there for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a very neutral design. If you took like the average knife uh, silhouette, 
uh, in the world, you will get this. You have a nice little uh, drop point blade with a nice switch. You have a, a very comfortable, not very comfortable, but a very neutral handle that can fit a lot of people because it doesn't have very strict shapes in there like this one I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Uh, it has a very nice fidget factor with the Benchmade uh, access lock. It has a nice deep carry pocket clip. It is extremely light, one of the lightest knives out there. Definitely the lightest knife in my current collection. And yeah, just overall very nice. S30V, fantastic blade steel. Uh, I personally like S30V more than S35VN because it's a bit more stain resistant and it does hold an edge better. Uh, not a big deal for me, I haven't to be honest, all my knives are dull and I haven't sharpened them yet. So, and it has this nice coating which actually helps with the the um, the the rust resistance even more. Unfortunately, what I've noticed is that uh, I was cutting when I moved into my new house. I used this a lot to cut up a bunch of cardboard, and it kind of polished up the the coating. So you can see here, you can still have this kind of matte finish on the top here because it didn't. It was not polished by the cardboard, but the bottom here, it has very much been polished by the cardboard itself. Okay, moving on, uh, one of my favorite knives, oh, I already talked about this. Uh, we have the most expensive knife in my collection. This is the ZTO 450 CF. It has all the high-end things that you want in a, in a grill knife. This is my first ever grill knife. It has very nice carbon fiber skills here, and it is a textured carbon fiber. Titanium on one side, it has S35VN with a nice uh, black coating as well. And then it has this nice green thumb studs in the back right there. Um, it is not the easiest knife to take apart because we do have free spinning pivots here. We have screws that go straight into the titanium. Uh, I have lock tightened this. I have not uh, tried opening it ever since I lock tightened it. But uh, let's hope that's not going to be a big issue. One thing I do appreciate is that the screws here are quite deep. So with some knives, sometimes the screws... Do I have an example here? No, I don't. Sometimes the screws are a little bit shallow. And then you're gonna need some really good high quality, uh, very little wear, uh, uh, torx bits to, to open them. But because these go so deep that uh, even like worn out torx, torx bit screws, I can still use them on this guy. Very, very nice. It does not have a deep carry pocket clip, which uh, I'm not very happy about. I am a deep carry pocket clip kind of guy, but that does help out with the ergonomics. Speaking of ergonomics, er ergonomics here are kind of challenging. My hands are small, I wear small size gloves. And then the first time I, I used this knife, it was kind of here nor there. To kind of squeeze in here, kind of feels a little bit out of taste because then my middle finger is resting on this little point right here. If I want to uh, spread it out a little bit, then this pinky is on this point right here. So overall, this is kind of a mess ergonomically. Uh, the only reason why I keep it in my collection is because, number one, it's my first grill. And then number two, this detent is the best detent I've ever felt. It is an amazing detent. It just fires out and then it just fires up with authority and I really like that. And that is, I tried selling this knife, this, this knife twice, but every time I've posted it up for, for sale, uh, after some time I kind of retract it because, well, I'm having a tough time letting this guy go. There are a few knives I want to get this year that might kick this out of the collection, but even then I'm not so sure. Like this could be one of those knives that it's really great in one area, but it doesn't really satisfy me in other areas but to get a knife that compensates that one area which I really like which is this fast action and, and this really nice detent and this really nice flipper tab I don't know if I can find a replacement for that next up uh, or, or last to go is this guy this is the uh, native 5 salt uh, so we have here LC200N this is part of their salt series which means that this knife is at least in theory completely unrustable and by that I mean like you can dip this in salt water for a week and you would, it still wouldn't rust. You might need to hose it out to get all the salt particles off of the knife but it's not going to rust from the tests that I've seen. Uh, very easy to disassemble. You have, again, I really like this, T8 screws all the way around. The best ergonomic knife I've ever held in my hand. Just everything just melts in beautifully in the hands you have again you have this frn tech uh, frn handles with this nice texture initially i wanted to dye this green but after having this for some time i kind of like the yellow the yellow really stands out and really stands out to the rest of my collection uh, fantastic ergonomics nice finger trial nice texturing on the jimping right here gives a lot of nice grip 
Now, I have swapped the clip around, I am right handed, but sometimes I do swap this around so that you know, I can get a bit of a better ergonomic grip because the clip is not in here. Not that the clip gave a hot spot, but over here, just flipping it around, it just carries just as nicely. It has a uh, full flat ground with a swedge at the top, which gives it a nice pointy tip, like a needle tip kind of tip. And it does come to a very nice keen edge and and as you can see here uh, i've used this knife so much uh, i gotta say the knife that i use the most in the past year and a half is this guy this guy you can talk about how blunt it is uh, this guy based on the polishing but you know again locking mechanism fail and i've used this guy quite a bit as well especially when i would just want to go out and not carry something really expensive and uh, something i don't really mind losing so there we go, that is my entire knife collection. Uh, do comment below which one of these do you guys like the most and I'll get back to you another time with another video. Thanks guys and stay ready.